it's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. I'm in my caravan in Tembe in West Wales. But we're not going to be here long. We're uh, going for a little walk. There you go. So, the reason why... Here's a look at it. There you go. There's our little caravan. But the reason why I'm filming today is we're going to head this in this direction uh, to Tembe. Tembe Town Centre. Uh, I want to do a little video of the pubs and bars of Tembe. I was in Tembe yesterday having a little beer and some of the wonderful wonderful brewers there were like we're brewing in the morning um if you're up and about now which way is it this way um if you're up and about do you want to come down and brew some beer with us and i was like yeah why not so um my family are always generally kind of up about nine ten o'clock and i'm an early riser i'm generally up by seven o'clock in the morning so i thought to myself get up as always Stop kicking about that caravan, waiting for everybody to get up, get up, get dressed, have a coffee and go brewing. So it's currently 7.45am and we're going to do pubs and bars of Tembe. So I'm going to walk into Tembe now, but this is, this is Kiln Park. We're in Kiln Park in Tembe. We come generally every year on holiday. Um, my wife's a big fan of Tembe. My wife's a big fan of caravanning and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's all right. It, 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 I don't mind it. You know, as long as I got a pint in my hand, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. So, um, I'll pick this up now uh, when I get into this 12th, 13th century town of Tembe. It's a walled town. Some of the pubs are actually built into the walls of the defence walls of this, uh, of this town. So, um, yeah, see you in a moment. So, we're approaching the, the walled town of Tembe. Uh, there's the church inside. Uh, so it's basically a giant castle <laughs> that's been here for about, I don't know, 700 years, maybe 800 years. It's a bit early in the morning. But it was built by the Normans and they built it to keep the barbaric Welsh out. So there's the, the, what they call five arches. And all of these little doorways are either shops or pubs. Um, this is Tembe United Football Club. You can get a real cheap pint in there if you want. It's something like, I don't know, this day and age, 2022, it's like three pound a pint, which is superb. Uh, what's this called? Nelson's Walk Shops and Restaurants. Maybe we can... And maybe that's not open yet, but you'll be able to see, look, there's, there's, there's a, a turret thing going on there. Um, the restaurant there, you see the little sign for the restaurant. Down the bottom there, that's the main entrance, I would say, into, into Tembe. That's where all your visitors will go, five, the five arches. There's a pub there called the Bush Inn, set inside one of these walls. But let's go in this way, let's, let's see if we, I mean, we may not be able to get through. We may be able to get through. But look at this, I mean. Incredible, isn't it? To think that all of this has been here for, for so long. There's a pub. I'm sure there's a pub in this lane as well. A little gin, a little place for gin. If you like your gins. <clears throat> yeah, so. Here it is. So I'll show you the first pub. I'll just, I'll just hit pubs where I think you might be interested in. Um, so this is the, the Normandy. This is one I used to frequent when I was um, a younger man. Uh, the Normandy Inn. Hello. Might if I just pop my head in and just have a look at the pub? Thank you very much. So. 
all nice, all really nice places, you know, all the old fireplaces and whatnot. Um, point of tribute if you want it, London Fields, uh, you know, Shipyard, San Miguel, that sort of thing, Tetley, Strongbow. Sorry, thank you very much, cheers. Uh, this is an interesting pub up here. Uh, it's the uh, Dylan Thomas pub. That's it, Dylan Thomas. <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? So, you know, watering all the plants there and outside the pub. Ah, so um, I'll get to the Dylan Thomas pub in a moment, but right where this van is this is where i was going to show you that i said there's a pub in the in the lane it's called this twisted shamrock so another kind of small alleyway here but this leads to a pub so you've got a hairdresser's on the one side and then you've got a pub here i mean you'd never know it was here would you you'd have to really advertise this place you can see that there's the the, the castle the, the castle walls above and you've got this little place set in i suppose it was for smugglers and all sorts of things years ago so in terms of beer it is eight o'clock in the morning i should be going to mash in now in terms of beer worthington's start a pravin uh cause that sort of thing uh, but i want to show you this dylan thomas pub hopefully there might be a cleaner there or something we can get in and show you uh so apparently uh Dylan Thomas once drank in this pub. But to be honest with you, Dylan Thomas drank everywhere. Um, he liked his beer, Dylan Thomas. Uh, so, so a lot of these pubs, they're like, oh, you know, Dylan Thomas drank here. This is a inter really interesting place. So this, this was a stable here. There used to be years ago, a massive, massive hotel here. Huge, huge hotel. And this was just um, a little place where a little place where they used to you know, keep the horses and stuff. I thought that was really pretty. <clears throat> so, good food pub. The Coach and Horses, this is it. Um, 1953, Dylan Den Thomas visited this pub. He became so drunk that he left his manuscript of Under Milkwood on the stool. Uh, it's more of a kind of a Thai cuisine now. <laughs> Very old, all very old and quaint and... So down here, if this door is open, we might be able to shoot down here. Somebody hopefully so nobody locks it behind me. You got tap and tan down here. This is, now it's kind of confusing. This is Tembi Brewing Company's tap. Um, when it's open, I'll probably give you a little there's a bar there. Give a little look around in this place. But that is, well, yeah, anyway. Tap and Tan by Tembi Brewing Company and Feast. So they've got like barbecue food in there as well, which is really nice. Again, all these little alleyways and plenty of places to get to have a drink in Tembi. <clears throat> so the confusing thing is, You've got Tembi Brewing Company and you've got Tembi Harbour Brewery. Now, where we're going today, Tembi Harbour Brewery is where we're, where we're going to be mashing in at, um, I should have been there at eight o'clock. I think it's like gone, it's got gone eight o'clock now, but we'll get there when we get there. I'm sure they're just turning up themselves. Place there. Um, Jamaican, Jamaican grill, uh, pizzeria. <clears throat> I'm gonna just cross over the road. There's a Premier Inn if anybody wants to come down and stay here. I'm just gonna come down and show you this side of the wall here. So this, where we were, we were just, you know, we were just the other side of that where I where I walked through that lane. So. Uh, you can see the buildings like built into the actual walls here it's incredible absolutely incredible and then you've got a great big pub now this is a crying shame for me this pub here i spoke to some of the locals and it's 
the Royal Lion Hotel. And apparently the owners, for whatever reason, he's leaving it going to disrepair. Don't know why. Don't ask me why some of these people make some of these decisions. Um, but it looks all right, you know. It's a right mess. It's all mat. If you have a look for you, there's all mattresses leaned up in the windows and awful, awful to think. Then you have this here. You know, you come out onto the main road and you've got this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful kind of miles and miles and miles of beaches. Look at it. Absolutely incredible. And that's the famous kind of where everybody thinks of Tempe, they think of all of that down there, uh, which is absolutely wonderful. It is absolutely wonderful. There's all sorts. There's pubs all over here. Um, you know, there's little places where they just got hatches and they'll serve you beer through hatches. You can take it down to the beach. Um, it is a real picturesque place. Um, you've got kind of Swansea mumbles over that direction. Um, but yeah, look at this this place here. Looking back at it, the Royal Lion Hotel. You... I know this is sacrilege, sacrilege, but comment in the comments box on this one. Let's let this van go past. Comments in the comments box. Now I'm going to drop a controversial one here now because me and my wife we disagree on this all of the time. If, a, if an independent little company is not going to look after a place like this, then why not let someone like Weatherspoons take it? You imagine, you imagine what Weatherspoons can do to this building. They could, they would spend millions on this building and they probably have all chairs outside, tables, chairs, somewhere to drink, somewhere to, I mean, for goodness sake, there's somebody, there's people eating in there, there's people staying in this place, you know? I, I, I think, my, my wife disagrees. My wife thinks it should stay independent. But on a personal note, I think if, if it's not being well look after, look, looked after, well maintained, then, then, then let somebody else kind of look after it and maintain it. Somebody with a bit of money. Don't let it drop into the sea type of thing. But love to know your comments on that one because that is going to be a talking point. Um, Tembi is very protected in terms of independent businesses. Um, there is a Greg's year. They took Greg's years to get into Tembi. All little kind of quaint lanes and bits and pieces down there. But it, sweet shop. It took Greg's, the bakers, years and years and years to get into Tembi, absolute years. So, I mean, I, I imagine it's gonna take someone like Weatherspoons even longer. Uh, so, more of these lovely, lovely looking buildings. There's a market there. If anybody wants a cheap sandwich or something, you've got the market going on there. There's all sorts of waffles and bakery. I'm sure that's a bakery chain. Um, so that's the Normandy where we were just, we, we were talking to that lady with the, the flowers. That's the Normandy there. Let the biff a lorry go. But have a look at this. Some of these buildings are almost touching in the t at the top. You know, look at look how look how narrow that building is. It's almost like it's got a Venice vibe about it. Uh, pub, stroke restaurant. It is a bit restauranty these days. Um, there's, there's a lot of places to eat. It's not just kind of drinking. And now we're walking down to, this is, now this is my favourite part of Tembi. Got a big church here. Uh, so, as I say, we're here about quarter past eight, half past eight in the morning. Lots of deliveries. This, this sort of thing's not, not happening. All the cars are banned, like, at, at nine, nine o'clock in the morning. They're all not allowed to kind of drive in here, which I think it should be all the time. I'd make them. I'd make them walk their carts down here. Yeah. I wouldn't let the cars in at all. Me, I think. It's... <coughs> Changes it. 
it changes tempi when there's cars driving around these little streets. It becomes a little bit annoying if you ask me. But when it when it's a pedestrian zone, it's absolutely lovely. Um, it's almost spoiling the view. Right, so um, there's another couple of pubs down this lane. Absolutely pubs everywhere. So you've got the Three Mariners. Three Mariners is another sort of, what can we call it, like a Molson Coors type pub. You know, you're getting, you're getting your Worthingtons, you're getting your Carlin, that sort of thing. But, you know, proper, proper old pubs there. I once stayed in that yellow building. That used to be uh, called the Bluebell Bed and Breakfast. Big blue. Big a blue bed and breakfast I stayed in once upon a time. Five Arches Tavern. This has been here a long time. You can see some of the... See some of these little doorways here. I mean, that's a normal doorway there. If you have a look. I don't know what that was. It must have been kind of either a small window or maybe a way down to the cellar. But, I mean, that's... That probably is, is my, hits my chin. It's probably about five foot tall, that little, that little doorway. Right, well, we can see in there. You know, it's your general Madri, Molson Coors. They've got a, that's, that's the, I would say it's the only little criticism I have is that they've got a bit of a stranglehold Molson Coors on, on, on places in, in Pembrokeshire, in Tenby. Uh, so this is the five arches. This is what I was showing you earlier on So this pub here This is a proper locals pub if you're a locals pub type of thing, you know sky sports going on uh, jukebox kind of like Going a bit nuts, you know that sort of thing uh, pool tables that sort of thing, but look how narrow it is I mean, it's not even that's probably about five foot wide that pub and if you come down, so this is this is the what I was showing you earlier. This is the main entrance to Tembi. This is this five arches, which I'll show you. But so so the pub, this bush in, look, it's it's, it's built into the it's built into this massive defence wall of of Tembi. We uh, can't really see that. Sorry. Greek, Greek restaurants, all built into the walls. So this is the five arches. This, this would have been the kind of fortification, the main entrance into Tembi years ago when it was built by the Normans. You can imagine, can you? You know, you've 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 managed to get in here, and then you come through, and you know it's a it's a lovely little quaint little town with. It is a castle. Whether whether I got time to show you the castle. Um, we'll just make our way now to. My favourite area of Tembi, where, where I find local breweries and that sort of thing. So we're around the back of the church now, we were just around the other side just a minute ago. But everywhere you go, everywhere you are, though, you can see, you can see the sea. You can just see, make out the sea there. Everywhere you are in Tembi, you're never, you're never kind of too far away from the sea. Maybe scoop down here. Right, hopefully that delivery truck's gone now so I can show you. So when you... Ah, it's still there. Trade team delivering beer, look. It's ruining the view a little bit. 
Yeah. Well, that yellow, what yellow wagon is, uh, that's one of my favourite pubs behind there, only because some of the pubs are shut on a Monday. And, but this place is open all of the time, it's one place. So there's a place over here to eat and drink. Can't quite see it with a lot of these. Uh, you've got the bay tree, like a fine dining type place. Uh, Tembi House, one of my one of my favourite, one of my favourite places. Tembi House there, the Lifeboat Tavern, absolutely terrific place. The Lifeboat Tavern, really really lovely. Some of these places are open. I might be able to show you the Lifeboat because. They actually cut open a boat. They actually cut a boat open and, and made it into their bar. Let's see if I... I think there's a cleaner in here. Morning. Morning. Could I just film the boat a bit? Can I film the boat? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, Is that all right? I won't, I won't work on your mop floor. Thank you very much. So, yeah. <laughs> so, there, there's the bar. You've got the... You've got the boat. And it runs all the way down the side. This is all, this was a boat that they kind of reclaimed and <laughs> kind of made it into a giant bar. Absolutely wonderful. But what a lovely place, eh? What an absolutely wonderful place. This is one of my favorite places. Fantastic beer garden down the bottom. Maybe quickly, I'm gonna show you the beer garden. If... Say hello, mate. Morning. Old anchors, that's from the boat there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, mate. Thanks for letting me in. And you can see, you know, again, it's all, you know, this, this, this place is like built in the 1300s type of thing. Thick stone walls and wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Uh, Doom Bar, Kuru, Tembi Ale, uh, Guinness, Coors, Worthings. I generally drink that, Blue Moon. If I come in here, I generally have a Blue Moon. Thank you ever so much, thank you. So that was... That was a three, what do they call it that? The Lifeboat Tavern. I keep, keep calling it the three, three mariners for some reason. Right, Tembi House. Let's see. Let's see if I can kind of slide in. It is eight o'clock in the morning. And the Alsatians jumping all over me. So there's a quick look. That's a quick look at Tembi House. And then they've got a fantastic beer garden. The sun hits this place all afternoon. And um, what I like about this place, it's got all beer signs, in coop all sops, bass, banks over there, Cameron's Brewery, Worthington, Strongbow, you know, Stella Guinness. But some really interesting ones like Red Rose, Stout, Chester. Sorry, just popped in to film you, don't be doing mind. Tap these. Can I have a quick wander about in here? Is that okay? And I'll, I'll leave. Um, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this is this is this is Tenby House. Some of these pubs are just absolutely terrific. Is that okay? Just to have a little wander and I'll go out. Don't want to drink this time of the morning. <laughs> Here we go. So this is a massive old pub. Massive old pub. I was actually eating in here just yesterday. Sat there. Sat there. Watching the telly. Having a pint. Minding my own business. Yeah, look at some of these, you know, some of these old beams. They've been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. Right. I'll uh, go back up. Thank you very much. really funny seeing people's faces when I'm like can I come in and film and they really some of them don't understand at all what I'm doing uh, strong arm Cameron's yeah I like to come in here for what's that up there green green or Whitley festival export it's a really kind of oh, loads of living accommodation up here you can actually stay in here if you want stay in a pub little arcade for the kids in there in the night Oh, there's so much to do, so much to do. Right, let's make our way 
slide through this gate. <clears throat> This has worked out quite well. Oh, just bang my ah, oh, just bang my blooming leg on the oh, damn. Right. Oh, that's just winds. Let's just suck that up. Right. This is uh, the home, Tambi Harbour Brewery. This used to be like a, a general you know, Molson Coors type place, but they've actually, this place is pretty fabulous. So all of this here, you can see some of the harbour beers. All of this here is owned by Tambi Harbour. It started off life as just a, you know, like Blue Moon Coors sort of thing. But if you have a look, they got all of their own beers on this bar, lovely old fireplaces and you know, there's a beer garden down the bottom. Maybe, no, I'll go this way, I'll go this way. So the story with this is that they, they took on a little kind of like shack type old um, fisherman's warehouse type thing at the back of the brewery and they turned it, at, at the back of the pub, sorry, and they turned it into a little brewery. So, believe it or not, where we're going now, we're actually heading towards... Now, this is my absolute favourite part. I had a drink down here again yesterday. So we're on the back of that pub now, so it's prime position. So basically, like, you know, everyone's going to be kind of enjoying themselves, drinking. But look at this for a little lane. All the tables along here. All of the plants. And it's just absolutely wonderful. You might think you're in France or something. And, and this is a real surprise for me. Because this was... Well, we were here in April 2022. This has only been open for three or four weeks. So they basically... It's still work, work in progress. But they, they basically kind of knock through one of these little kind of garages. Morning. One of these kind of like, what do they call them? I don't know, like like little shipyard type, type where they used to keep their boats and stuff. They've knocked one through. And you can sit all along this little quaint lane. I mean, look at this. All work in progress. I'm sure over the next years you're going to see... You know, they're going to be putting the windows back in this building. But why not open it up? Look at this. Absolutely terrific. So we were sat. I was actually sat there with a bro broken uh, table arm, a, a chair arm. But, but, you know, this is the whole thing. It, it, it's bits. Nothing kind of matches. Got all different chairs from all different eras, all different areas. But I love it absolutely love it it just makes the place feel so terrific it really does so um standing on the bottom walking back let's make our way now they might be mashing i can smell the i can smell the wort so they might be they might have mashed in <clears throat> might be a bit late but that this sign here Tembe Sunniest Beer Garden, that actually come from a pub that was knocked down. Earlier on when I walked past the Premier Inn, that Premier Inn used to be a place called the Sun Inn, and they, they used to advertise it as Tembe Sunniest Beer Garden. So we're approaching, so what I was talking to you about earlier on, they, they took on like one of these older buildings in the lane, which for years and years and years, they were all like just derelict buildings, there was nothing really going on down here. And they started, you know, putting little bars in. That's where you get your beer when you're drinking in this lane. And of course, look, there's the sea. There's the sea just there. We were up. I was talking to you. There's the brewery. We'll go there in a second. But I was talking to you just now. Let's see if we can see it. This is the kind of the 
the interesting bit. I was talking to her. See, the, see that building up there, the yellow one? That was that building I was saying maybe Weatherspoon should take it on. That that Royal um, Lion Hotel, that's up there. <coughs> Another pub there, the yellow one. Pub stroke restaurant. Well, let's get in. Let's get into the... Let's get into the brewery. I'm about half an hour late. They invited me for eight o'clock. I'm not sure what the time is now, but here we go. Let's let's get in. Let's have a look at this brewery. Morning. You mashing in here? I am, yeah. Oh, fantastic! This is just working a treat this morning. This video. Do you mind if I come over and stick the camera in the? Uh... Yeah. That. What are you brewing today? Uh, seahorse. 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 Yeah. All light mm -hmm. malts going on it. How many? How many different malts you got in there? Uh, uh, two. Just two today. Two different malts. Yeah. There we go. Absolutely wonderful. So I spent my morning walking around all of the um, bars and all the cleaners that are in the bars, and I've just been kind of wandering about. But uh, yeah. All coppers as well, which is amazing. This is just wonderful copper. Good morning. morning. How are you doing? Good. We've good. been filming for half an hour. I've been walking around Tembe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, good, yeah. How are you doing? Um, first thing in the morning. Rob. 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 How are you doing, Rob? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, all good. So I've been going half an hour. I've just been kind of like on rails walking through Tembe. And I've just kind of walked in here and... Got you mashing in. Yeah, Scotty's mashing in, getting the brew ready. So, yeah, we're going to have a bit of seahorse today. Bit of seahorse, so this has got two malts in it. Yeah, so we use uh, just extra pale malt. Yeah. And then a little bit of dextrin then. Oh, fantastic. Uh, just to give it that like mouthfeel, a bit of body. Uh, and then a bit of torrified wheat then for some head retention as well then. So, yeah, so it's a nice basic mash, nothing too complicated, but obviously important because we want to get all those sugars and everything there. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. and use your fermenters. Yeah, so two in here, and then another four in the extension then, yeah. So four in here. I was just explaining to the viewers that um, when I first kind of came to Tembe, this lane, was, it wasn't much going on in the lane at all, was it? No. Absolutely. You took on a building, um, the, the pub, you know, it was generally kind of paws and stuff on yeah. there, wasn't it? Mm. And, then, and then slowly but surely over the years, you've kind of replaced some of the taps with your own taps yeah. and it's all brewed down here in the back in, in the back of what was a lifeboat uh, where they would have kept the lifeboat or, or fishing uh, boats yeah it's all like fishing boats and just general well it became a bit derelict like storage then for just people of Tenby using it as like storage but it was very rarely used yeah yeah so i now, remember yeah. so then it's been uh renovated you were putting all the steel beams in one yeah. year when i come it was like a you know it was a lot yeah. lot, lot going on so you, just the visual for the viewers at one point it was just this blue floor so we were just this one unit with yes three. yes and then we've gone into there now um and obviously the whole lane now is being utilized as well it's um, and just there, so. i i say it's such a picturesque place it's like um walking in kind of venice or like yeah. a french french kind yeah. of you see on the social media all the posts people do it it, it does it, you could think you're anywhere like in europe or somewhere unbelievable not, not somewhere I, in wales the potential yeah for that lane you know, is is mm. I know they call it Sergeant's Lane. I call it brewery. You know, that type <laughs> yeah, of thing. Well, it's going to end up that way, I think. It's going to end up, yeah. A, a gin distillery going. Yeah, is that is that being built? Uh, as we speak, at the top of the lane, yeah, currently next to the courtyard. Yeah. Can we have a little? Yeah. Room? Well, it's not. We go here. We go through this way. We've John, our delivery driver, great John. Hi, John. How you doing, mate? On the beer here, people. You all right? Thank you. Yeah. I met you in the we summer. Did, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. We did a we did a live. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Here, eight o'clock in the morning. Right. Like, dedicated, dedicated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this this this, this lane, we kind of took it on. Um, so so the, the, these buildings here were, were yes, yeah. yeah, just general stories. But we've got people who have like embraced it as well. So you've got like Rob here, who's a, an artist. Yeah. He's like done his shop up, so he opens it up now for everybody to look at his painting. Yeah. Uh, you've got the Welsh doctor, who's so, so kindly watering their flowers for them, making the lane look nice. So Kim's come on board there as well. My wife bought a 
my wife bought the pillow off them yesterday. Oh, good quality, really uh, nice. Really, stuff. yeah, 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 really nice. So, yeah, yeah so they've so come we... along as well. So that's kind of brought the lane on, and then obviously there's there's this now. So have you, this. so what I I explained to the viewers, I, I had a bit of a second guess of it. Has this been knocked through, or was this this so part this was always? Here. Um, it was back in the day. It was people if they ever came to send me the old horse and cart. Oh right, yeah. So the you... horses were literally kept in here. So this was all so for your stable, horse and cart. This was the stables. Right, right. Um, quirky little thing. Then it used to be a pub. Oh, with, did it? Yeah, history. The George and Dragon. No the... way. Yeah, Wait, which so is where quite was? Where, where I'm not was sure in, in terms of some part of this. This building, it was in this area, so... So maybe maybe it was that building yeah. down the bottom there. That looks kind of quirky, doesn't it? Yeah. Should yeah. we have a look at that? So maybe the Georgian Dragon was... Yeah, so then you can see all the different... So we've sort of got it in there now. So that's ready for... Is this the distillery? distillery? That's where it's going to be, yeah. So fantastic. So, so if you imagine when I come down in 2015, this is yeah. for my viewers, this is what... That brewery over there, or a little bit further down. This is this is what I was greeted with. I like, kind of like walked down the lane and was speaking to them and saying, uh, "What's going on?" And they were like, "Oh, we're building a brewery." So if you come down here in a couple of years' time, it'll be twenty twenty four, twenty twenty three. Yeah. This is going to be a gin distillery, and you know they've got a bit of work to do. But you can imagine, can you? So the same be, sort of thing. Great so this is the picture of what the courtyard looked like, literally. A couple of months ago and now that's it that look so at that, that, that i mean look at that everybody look at that overgrown and but it's wonderful that you've seen the potential of this yeah you've seen the potential it's just it's just i mean imagine the clientele they're gonna love yeah. this isn't they fantastic yeah so the george and the dragon it might have been probably one of these units or might a combination have been, of the few yeah because that's got a nice facade to it that yeah. building hasn't all the it? art and the art sort of doorways and everything yeah so i imagine it was that probably... could have been the george and yeah. the dragon yeah 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 so that's the distillery so um any further plans i mean i know you're working on the, the distillery at the moment uh, um not really it's just expanding sort of the brewery in terms of beers and what we're doing um so yeah. we've got a couple of new new uh variations we want to try okay to do so we're looking at potential richards uh wants to do like a best bitter right so, yeah um and then we also want to do like a cold fermented uh ipa which will then eventually lead on to us doing lagers which is the next the big the big thing we want to do do you know i, I think that is the, the biggest thing to do yeah. the biggest thing to do you can imagine as a brewer i'm excited that's why i want to i want to give it a go and try it and do that so that should be the next thing for us is Pilsners, yeah. Hellers, mm. maybe spend maybe spend a month or two in Germany. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Get out to nice. Germany. Yeah. Because yeah. even I tried some of that Hofmeister stuff. The okay. the, the, the new Hofmeister. Yeah. It's a tremendous beer. Mm. Tremendous beer. Yeah, they are, they're really good beers. So I think it's you know, we've kind of done all the IPAs, we've done the dark beers, we've obviously got like the black IPA. Yeah. You've got your pale. So we've kind of done like the traditional range. Yeah. Um Obviously, there's still some amazing ingredients and all to use, but it'd be nice to, to try a different style completely. While I'm here, I know it's only, what is it, half past eight in the morning? Okay. Can you sample something yeah, while, while we're... Uh, sample some of your... Well, you right? Yeah, of course. May, I'm not sure if you've got anything ready in the fermenter, or maybe up in the pub uh, you've got something to, to draw there is, off. There'll be definitely stuff to draw off in the pub for you. Um, Quite interesting. Oh, we've, got the, the bar. we've got the bar here, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I've got to be honest. I'm going to come around the other side. Yeah. Because I was just showing my viewers just now. Oh, actually, the doors are shut. But door you can imagine that door's open there now. I think he's going to open it for us. So you're down this lane. You're having a little sit down and, and, and you know... This is this is a, uh, an area they've utilised as well. This was probably an old storage area, but... You know, they're storing all, all their beer in here and buy a T-shirt. There's upstairs seating. But the amount, the amount that's gone in, it's just wonderful. Wonderful. It's probably the best, best part of Tempe now, especially if you're a beer drinker. Yeah, I mean, it's ideal for those who just want to come down because we obviously we've got the hustle and bustle of the main pub. Mm. But for those who just want a nice, quiet drink, enjoy some... Some tasty ales without blaring music. Yeah, I love and, it. You know, yeah. the, the, with you know, some people just uh, yeah, it goes. It's sort of a throwback almost to like your traditional pubs, really. Yeah, a absolutely. Lot of are saying so. I'll just 
one a little bit off of each. Nice so again, the advantage of well. it literally being just there is nice short lines if you're getting the freshest, the freshest beer. Yeah, this this is the thing. This is the point. You're brewing. There's your your fermenters, and and here's your. Yeah, we're literally there. Everybody can just enjoy. Everybody, it. you know, there's that's how far the beer's got to travel across that threshold. There, it's the the the, the potential is just. But I think you know, looking at, uh, we, I I can see exactly where you want to go with it. You got your cores and you've, yeah. you know you start about. You, you definitely got to brew your own lagers. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's the next thing I think it's got to be to go in with all of this. It's. Ales, like lagers, gins, I mean, yeah, vodkas, uh, rums. The potential, so, yeah. yeah, all your own. So here's our, that's the Wally the Walrus one. Can I, so that's. So that's this one, the Tamar's Tusk. So obviously we had that visitor. Can I spin that and ask you to hold that one? Let's go. You right. can enjoy the wares. There we are, so uh, this is 4.8%. Uh, uh, yeah, Arctic Pale Ale, so quite uh, interesting. So juicy. Yeah. Mm. Perfect breakfast. Mm. <laughs> that is wonderful, really. Yeah. Good. So you've got a bit of uh, Simcoe in there, and a yeah. bit of um, also a Zaka, which is another US hop. Mm. Really nice floral. Uh, we also use lactose in that, so that's that sweetness. That little, that little bit of sweetness yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then that. a bit of citra dry hop in there. So that's all those juicy flavours. Extra pale malt, so you can see the colour. It's almost clear. So mm. yeah, it's a really good. That's, that's proved as one of, and it was our tribute to our little friend who visited last year. The, 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 Wally the, 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 yeah, Wally the Walrus. Ah, cool. So he visited Tembi last year. So we did a little homage to him with a beard. Um, I can do another one for you. Cool, that is, um, you know, certainly wakes you up in the morning, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, P. Pier Funner, so it's a New Zealand hot pale ale. Pier Funner, again, light in colour. Of course, it's the summer, so what else do you want to drink apart from poppy pale ales? Um, so pier and Fanga is just Maori for harbour beer. So just again, simple. brilliant, brilliant. There's a there's a story in each of our beers. Really there's a story. Absolutely so yeah, really so nice. you've got Motowika and Nelson Soivan as our Roma hops. So it's dry hop with them as well, and then just some Pacific Gem for a bit of bitterness there. Again, extra pale malts. So it's just yeah, crisp, tasty. So, so, so drinkable. You can so imagine drinkable. the last the last few hot days, a few of them in the sun, yes. you just can't beat it. Sitting down that lane, yeah. you know, just absolutely wonderful, yeah. absolutely wonderful. I just tell my viewers, I'm, um, it, Tembi, it's such, people come from all over the Europe, don't they, now? Um, yeah. Poland, uh, Germany, to yeah. visit. We've to had, visit uh, recently, we've had some Americans. So, yeah, you come get over. from everywhere. They, everywhere. They visit, yeah. A, such um, uh, the there's something for everybody, mm. isn't it? If people are into food, there's plenty yeah. of restaurants. You got the wall. If you're history, yeah, the, the, you got the castle on the top of the hill, yeah. and you got the walled town. Yeah. And you got like the Tudor Merchants' House, literally just around the corner from here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's there's so much. It, yeah, it's for everybody. There's a little bit for everything, whether it's the beaches or just the walks or the beer. But everybody comes for the beer. Everyone Absolutely wonderful. You have to come to this yeah. place. It's really good. Rob, um, oh, good morning. Yeah. How are you? Look who's turned up. <laughs> Head Brewer Richard. Yeah. How are you doing, manager. Richard? So the, uh, chefs, yeah. Pardon me. Head Brewer. Wonderful beer. Thank you. Absolutely much. wonderful beer, yeah. What, um, are, are you a Tenby lad or...? Um, no, I'm Pembrokeshire. Pembrokeshire? not Tenby. Uh, okay. I don't mind coming over the... Like. <laughs> Every morning. Ah, it's just <laughs> absolutely fabulous, absolutely yeah. fabulous, it really is. Um, you've been here a number of years now, brewing? Yeah, seven years now. Seven years? Yeah, yeah, since 2015. So will you be in charge of the, like, the gin operations going forward? Is that going to be your, um, or, you know? Not necessarily the production side, but, yeah. like, the sort ideas of, and, yeah, it's sort of, of, like, the, you know, we all sort of have our own ideas and this is, mm. you know, sort of have a sort of creative input yeah um but yeah the boys have been working behind the scenes to do a few um runs of uh, flavored gins and things like that so it's just um, puts a smile on my face it really does so to, 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 to look at what you've done since 2015 is just just fabulous so it's just so what the gin place was over the road, the, the, this building here where we're standing was in exactly the same kind of, if you like, state. You've, yeah, yeah. you've, you've put all the steels in, you've kind of, 
you've expanded the brewery probably by 100 percent yeah 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 we've you doubled know. the size of it put more tanks in sort of around this side and uh yeah let's go over there. yeah let's uh, yeah let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's have a look <laughs> but, uh, let's, let's, let's go yeah so this is the original part of this side yeah um, so we sort of created a bit more room to move the kit around um a couple of years ago just before covid and then uh, so given us a bit more space to operate in the middle yeah and then we expanded into this bit uh, so we took this over around the same time and again sort of put the, put the tanks in this side and added another one um, sort of commissioned these two that we had uh, wait, ready and waiting and then this one at the back there uh, which we can allows us to do a lot of things some kegging canning and stuff like that so lagering which I think is really we just talking to Rob there yeah um, going forward mm. i think that's the next ne the next uh, frontier yeah. for you guys is is is, yeah, is yeah. lagering is just yeah. maybe some helles yeah some pilsners it's, it's a natural progression really because yeah. we already do like all of our own real ales uh, so different styles so yeah to be able to produce our own would be brilliant and have a bit more sort of again creativity with that as well um and uh, yeah, some great sort of new ingredients and yeah. new hops, and like we're trying to sort of push using more British hops, um, which we've done with our water, which which is the, the UK IPA. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a best bitter, which is you know sort of a style that's on the comeback, and again it would sit nicely with the rest of our range. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, to do like I, I'm I'm quite into doing like British lager or some, you know something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got lots of new ideas and. The, th the thing that's great here is that we're able to be quite agile and change styles and bring out new beers, you know, pretty quickly and fairly mm. often. So, and and we've got the, the ability to sort of test them out on our own bar straight away. So it's yeah. quite nice to get the feedback directly. Um, and we've got a great sort of customer base uh, with you know the great ale pubs in South Wales. Um, being on our sort of on our books, on your books, uh, means indoors, that so. they're really excited when we bring new beer out and things like that. So it kind of puts us puts us in a position where we we're, we're quite easily able to bring out new beers and 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 we've got no you know yeah. opposition to that at all. It's good. It's really Fa it's fabulous. Exciting. Fabulous. Yeah. I mean. Um, what what is it? I mean, I always come here in the summertime. I come here every year. Um, one of my favourite places in the whole of the UK to visit. I'm only an hour and a half away by car. But what is it like in the in the depths of winter? Is yeah. it is it is it a different kind of? Because of course you haven't got, you, you don't have the, the amount of tourists. You probably still got tourists. Um, but I almost imagine you like you know almost kind of lighting a fire in the fireplace <laughs> behind you. It's you, you know yeah. exactly because. Yeah, you're yeah, still, yeah. you're still, you're story, still wearing yeah. the shorts. But yeah. uh, what is it like in the? Is it more kind of cute in the winter? With like, it's, you can yeah. relax a little bit. Maybe, maybe do some more work in. In is that a time for where you're kind of building the the, the distillery and thinking yeah. and having no. more ideas? We, yeah, we always tend to do like a winter project. So it, yeah. it can be like a physical. You know, like doing out one of the buildings, which we've done for the last few years. So exactly. Just, every uh, every sorry, time I come down, something's down changed. This year, but then we also develop new things, you know, update the branding or whether it's, you know, like the website and things like that. So we always have to, we have to sort of put a lot of stuff on hold for the busy summer months. Oh, absolutely. And just get through. The room yeah. wise, we don't stop. We don't yeah. Stop. No. We're still, car, like, we're still doing the cask is a little bit longer. <coughs> I would probably say our only real quiet month is January. Because yeah. you have Christmas and New Year's is pretty busy down here. Yeah. November, obviously, the rugby. So we're doing all our rugby beers. Mm -hmm. so like Sheriff, the North Star. Um, we're doing, yeah, the Sea Bass. So we've got all of them. And then February again, it builds up again with the rugby. Cause yeah, Six Nations, so like Six Nations, rugby, right? You know, with rugby and everything. So you have got your sheriff. I noticed yeah, over there. You have got your sheriff. Enjoys it, yeah. So mm, yeah. We're, yeah, so we're constantly. So I would say January, but even then, we're we're doing yeah. still doing projects like things to think about and yeah yeah, yeah so. what about um so one question i wanted to ask which i um I, I almost forgot um is all of this capacity for the lane and the pub or do you sell to local pubs who've got like in command that you've got the, yeah. did you get your beer out or, or is it just for here especially in the summer months is it like 
the amount of people who hit Tembi in the summer is incredible. Yeah. Is all your beer sold here in the summer? And, and not, not absolutely all of it. Um, we find that in in the winter we sell it up the line, sort of Cardiff, South Wales, that sort of area. Mm. Um, uh, but now this time of year, the, most of our cask beer goes in our own pubs. Yeah. But there are the local pubs get busy down here as well. Yeah. Obviously with all the visitors, so. So it, it, it changes. See, so pop go. down and say, oh, yeah. can, we, can we have a cask off? We just run out. <laughs> Is it yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of thing that goes on and then you've got to just, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, like, uh, we were doing some photos for the website and stuff the other day, and it's like low carbon deliveries because we basically chuck it on a trolley yeah. and take it around the corner, you know, 10. 12 bars Absolutely. Um, yeah, this is how it's been done for hundreds of years, isn't it? The, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah so, brilliant. So although, like, obviously brewing has been a hell of a lot of innov innovation and things like that, um, actually there are elements, you know, that are still remain the same. For wonderful. Centuries, I guess. Absolute wonderful, but, uh, yeah. But, you know, the best the best food miles is in the lane because we we rack the beer where we're stood now, put it in the cold room two metres away. Yep. And then it basically moves another two metres towards the... To the, you know, to the, Wonderful. the board, yeah. and then that's it, it's on the bar. And that's it, it's on the bar. I I've, I don't think I've ever been to a place where you can get fresher beer. In terms of, like, seaside location, Yeah. Um, this is it's just you wonderful. Hear the seagulls in the back. Uh, hear the seagulls, <laughs> get yourself a bag of chips or, yeah. or, or that sort of thing. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Thank yeah. you. No Thank you very, Thanks very much for... Um, for uh, yeah. Like Have a nice holiday. I will. I'll have a, a, a nice holiday. I started off in the caravan this morning, so I kind of like, here I am in Tenby, Kiln so Park. Well, well, just just. Yeah, uh, we're off to call the island today, oh, but no. uh, um, in about an hour or so. So um, I'll catch up, go and uh, catch up with the wife and the kids. We'll um, but there's going to be other parts. There's going to be another little part of, the, of this video, so I'll attach that on when we're all set. But thanks for watching for now. So we're on Call the Island. Uh, this was the original priory which they closed when they built the the big priory in 1906 the big kind of monastery place that we'll show you a little bit later on but what's really interesting about this building is when they closed it it then become a number of used as a, a in a number of different ways over over a period of history it was used as a laundrette for not a laundrette but for laundry i suppose and it was actually used for brewing, brewing beer. So the Chimay family in Belgium purchased this island in 1906. It's part of the, 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 the mother, mother monastery. It goes back to Chimay. So this, this whole island is owned by the Chimay monastery. But if you come into this room here from being really warm outside you come into this room and you can really feel how how cold it is not cold but cool you can imagine with these vaulted ceilings you can really imagine them being able to store the beer in here and keeping it cool over the summer months i can understand why this was used as a brewery the thickness of the walls it must be about 25 degrees outside but walking in this room it's probably about 15, 12, 15 degrees. Amazing little place. So I spoke to one of the uh, monks here earlier on who was making chocolate, and I asked him a question about why they don't produce beer if they're owned by the Chimay Monastery. And it, it's just a simple fact that they can't draw enough water to produce enough beer so water is a precious commodity here on this island it's the reason other than that if they had a really decent water storage here you might be seeing chimay beer being produced in coldy island just off tenby in west wales i thought that was an absolutely fascinating fascinating piece when when speaking to the chocolate maker here Here's another. It kind of feels like an old brewery, doesn't it? Imagine them storing kind of, I don't know, whatever in this little yard here. So the Benedictine monks bought the island in 1906. They built this new monastery in 1910, uh, but it nearly bankrupted them. So it was later sold then 
to the actual kind of Chimay monastery people in Belgium. Hence that whole early story I was telling you about earlier regarding wouldn't it be amazing if they had a massive well yet? If they had a massive well of water or a great water source, we could be seeing Chimay beer be, being brewed here in uh, West Wales. But I thought that was a really interesting story, uh, especially with the old priory. Once that was built, that old priory was then used for brewing. Probably only temporarily. It probably wasn't a, you know, a, a major thing. But to think that brewing was happening on Coldy Island by monks, and now this whole place is owned by the Chimay monasteries, it is just incredible. It wouldn't take much, would it? It wouldn't take much to have a brewery here. Apart from, well, I suppose water. So the next brewery is Tembi Brewing Company. Nice gazebo up here. They've got a park and ride right outside, which is absolutely tremendous. Um, I've waited for the Saturday, so uh, this is a continuation two days later, if you like, from the first video. And here is, yeah, this is, this is Tembi Brewing Company, but I waited, I waited for the Saturday to do this because they always have a kind of 12 o'clock opening tap. And look at this, absolutely terrific. So you've got two lambs on the go, being smoked, boiled potatoes in the middle, being cooked and smoked all day. Absolutely wonderful. And then look behind you, you have the brewery, which is wonderful. So brewery tap, outside tap, food done by feast. And then, and then brewery. Should we have a little wander? A little wander into the brewery. Here we go. Fantastic. Hi, James. Hello. How are you doing? Very good. Fantastic. What a lovely place you got here. Yeah, thanks. It's quite nice to have the space as well. Like, I know about the brewery struggle for a bit of space, we're quite lucky with this site as well. Loads of space, loads of space. Yeah. I've been coming here the, the last three years and I've been walking past the place. I pop in for a pint every now and again, but I thought, yeah. gotta do a video, you know? <laughs> gotta do a video with this place. Because if you come to Tempe and you like beer, yeah. I would say, tremendous place to come in. Especially a Saturday where you got, I just showed all the food off there, you know, which yeah, is wonderful. Yeah, like weekend we thought we got something different on. So we got like Mexican next week, I think. And then the week after we got um, like tacos and things like that. So yeah, it's always sort of changing as well. Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, walking around the brewery, we got your, your yeah. fill in, you fill in today, yeah? Yeah, I just whacked these this morning. So okay. So, we've got in them. Lovely. So, uh, yeah, and I'm just uh, cleaning down the boiler from brewing yesterday, so, yeah, still busy. Yeah, Fantastic. Say, so. <laughs> You've got to keep on it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, um, Oh, you've got a few FBs in here, a few fermenters. Uh... Yeah, we're just upgrading to this new style. So, you know, we bought the kit second hand off Tiny Rebel about five years ago. Okay. But uh, since then, obviously, we're doing more and more hoppier styles and New England styles. And the traditional flat bottoms, although they've been great, you get a bit of tank loss between the fermenters and the carbonation and conditioning tanks. Right. So, actually, we're now just upgrading to so three of the unit tanks now. And that just uh, stops any light spike damage, keeps uh, oxygen out of the beer. And, yep. You know, I think Will will it give you the ability to lager as well? Yeah, so yeah. You're lagering by transferring to the conditioning tank. And okay. Lagering there for four, well, six weeks. Okay, so you get you, you yeah, that's that's yeah, the full. With the unit tank, it's a bit easier. Obviously, you just double the trough out the bottom. Yeah. And then you can just lager for as long as you want. Then, so. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we'll be seeing some more lagers for you yeah, then in the future. Yeah, we've got an exciting project we haven't really announced yet. It's for a 10B, like 4.2% gluten free rice lager. Wow, so, uh, yeah, fantastic. Like that, Japanese style lager, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really light and uh, zingy by the coast. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, your beer, uh, I'm from Barry, uh, South Wales, but we always see your beer in Cardiff. Yeah. Um, definitely, I'm a good friend with um, Richard Bennett down at the Pilot Brewery, oh, yeah, the yeah. Beer Riff. Yeah. Uh, we did Swansea together. We did the Swansea video yeah. of uh, where to drink in Swansea. Yeah. We had a whole day there. Um, so some of people watching this will remember Richard, but um, you guys have done a collaboration yeah, we're doing in the past. One again. Yeah, oh, we're are you? One every year called No Way Goes, uh, which is like a lime uh, tequila goes, which goes really nice in the summer. So we've done that for four years, so we're brewing that in the next couple of weeks again. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we still do a uh, yearly sort of like collab with them. Fantastic. So, in terms of um, the volume, um, would you say 
I don't know, eighty percent is sold in Tenby, or, or are you more kind of exporting all over South yeah, it's Wales? Actually, and... more across South Wales and the UK, to be honest. Like Tenby, obviously, we've got Harbour Brewery, which own a few pubs in Tenby. Yep. The other pubs are generally tied, and we don't, you know, we're keg only brewery. So, yep. although they might have three or tied cask lines, it's a bit harder to get in some keg lines. So. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, in terms of that, like distribution it's generally across South Wales. You know, Cardiff, Swansea that way, and up to Aberystwyth, sort of the coastal route. Yeah. Um, and then we deal with distribution partners for London and, and like even Edinburgh, Glasgow, and things like that. So, Fantastic. Yeah, so everywhere. <laughs> Fantastic. I was in your. Um your tap in Tenby, the, the centre of Tenby there. Oh, tap and tan. Tap and tan. And I, I, um, I finished up on your Imperial Stout the other day. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? A, a shortened day, that was. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I wasn't too late going to bed that night. But it, what a wonderful drink. What a wonderful few beers we had. Uh, we had the, like, a pale 4.5, pale... Uh, yeah, pale... Or... Something along those yeah. lines. Yeah, but that, that was terrific. Um... Yeah, wonderful. So, if you're around the Tenby area, two breweries to see, lots of beer to see, and make sure, if you're, if you're on holiday on a Saturday, come and visit this place. I mean, you can come, uh, uh, people are, do you generally let people into the brew yeah, to have a little look? Yeah, a little ask, and we're around sometimes, you know, we're not quite as busy on Saturdays, so yeah. it's sort of more locked up, but yeah, if you're around, pop your head in, say hi. Absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So yeah, here's the brewery, here's the food, here's the tap, absolutely wonderful. Tenby is really, from, from coming to Tenby over the last 30 years, over the last, I would say, five or six years, it's incredible for beer now, isn't it? Yeah, it really, it really is. is. You know, like, you know, two breweries in one town, it's great for a start. Yeah, yeah. There's also other great breweries in Pembrokeshire and around the area as well, so yes, yeah, it's, it's coming a long way. And in, in such a short time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time, right, James. Uh, come and have a look at Temi Brewing Company. Yeah, so here, here's the bar. So, as of 2022, Table Beers, Glow, Paradiso, Son of a Beast, there your pails. Coffee, milk, stouts. Yeah, it's just wonderful, isn't it? A couple of ciders, spirits, prosecco, and beer and taps. That's it. They separate. Wonderful. Sorry. Sorry. Wonderful.